G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we approach the end of this 18 team series going through each of the individual AFL clubs and pointing out their New Year's resolutions or what I think their New Year's resolutions should be to ultimately become a better side in 2024. We are now at the Carlton Football Club which means that I have done, I think that must be 51 individual vote of our videos on AFL teams this off season. And it has been fun, and I hope you've enjoyed the series. Uh, for anyone who is not aware, we've done a, a series going through every team's best 22 for next year, going through their best 22 three years from now, and in today's video, obviously having a look at 2024 and picking out certain things that clubs can improve to become a better team in 2024. And like I said, it has been fun. All this is available on playlists, by the way. But I am looking forward to something fresh. So we've got three teams left. Uh, the Carlton, the Brisbane Lions will be next, and then the Adelaide Crows. So... Today we are talking about, obviously, the Blues who had an incredible 2023. Uh, a team that sort of jumped out of the box and it was a jump out of the box that I kind of had forecasted at the start of that season. Um, I like to really double down on claiming the ones I get right because I make a lot of bad calls on this channel as well in terms of my predictions. Uh, but that being said, you know, the, the recipe for Carlton becoming a good side, I think it was there for all to see. It's quite obvious with the, the talent that they've got, the distribution of that talent among like their spine and their midfield. Now yeah, got some really good running backs. You know, the list balance is just so obvious. And we got a lot of players at that, on that list coming into their prime. So I do think Carlton are set for a pretty reasonably sized premiership window coming up. And so in this video, we're looking through that lens and looking at what they can do to become the best side in the competition. So. As always, guys, if you are enjoying the content that I put out and you're looking for more footy content throughout the 2024 season and the preseason and the off season, uh, it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe to this channel because I'm trying to grow it as quickly as possible to make this my career. So for now, let's talk about ways that Carlton can improve in 2024. And the first one is the most obvious one, and that is probably just form slumps. Now, uh, to be specific, right before they had that amazing end of the season, uh, they had lost six games in a row and had, fin uh, had slumped to 15th on the ladder, which, you know, for certain clubs that could be symptomatic of internal issues or, any or something like that. However, with Carlton, I don't think that was the case. I think it was kind of a case of them just not being able to optimize their talents. Maybe some of it's psychological. I'm not really too sure, but the, the side that emerged in the second half of the year makes me feel very confident that that form slump itself is not a symptom of a bigger problem internally. I think it's just a case of Carlton clicking. So. It's a bit of a throwaway one in a sense. Obviously, form slumps are not what any club wants to have. Carlton's was just particularly severe, so they really want to go through 2024. Having said, at no point did we fall back to, to being that side that we were before we clicked in the second half of the year. And you do have to wonder, you know, Carlton obviously finished fifth. Had they secured a top four finish um, and the way they played in finals, who knows what could have happened? You know, if that had been a home prelim against the Brisbane Lions, maybe they would have won. Had they played Collingwood in a grand final team, they beat six weeks or something previous, things could have looked very different. So again, it's not really worth um, you know agonizing over last year's form slump, but suffice it to say, this year they'll want to avoid the same thing happening. The next one is a bit more play specific, and that is just around Harry Mackay and you know getting the best out of him as a previous Coleman medalist. And we know that Carlton throughout the, the first half of the year before they got you know, really good forward line inefficiency was was a real issue for them. And when you look at individuals, Harry Mackay kind of stands out as a guy who probably played well below his talents. He kicked 29 goals, 29. Uh, I think he played 21 games, so not the whole season, but even still for a guy who's won the common medal before, a little bit down on his usual output. And we're talking about a 50% accuracy rate in front of goal, which is, you know, not what you want from a primary key forward in the way that he is. By contrast, Kerno kicked 81 goals, 44. Um, and he doesn't need to match Charlie Kerno. I just think it's fair to suggest that Harry Mackay at times this year, you know, he sort of, you know, created a bit of a highlight reel with some of the, the mistakes he was making. So just getting the best out of him uh, could, you know, really add another dynamic edge to this really dangerous Carlton side. If you imagine that, you know, if, if there's a full strength Charlie Kerno doing his thing at the other end, if Harry Mackay just tidies up what he's already doing, you know, less mistakes, a little bit more accurate in front of goal, maybe that 29 goals, 29 becomes 40 goals, 30 next year. I think that would be a huge plus for Carlton. The third resolution I have is find a way to integrate smoothly their low cost recruits. So what does that mean in English? Uh, basically, they, they've picked up a couple of you know cheap recruitment options in Orazio Fantasia as a delisted free agent and Elijah Hollands as a fairly low cost trade. And I'd imagine they foresee these guys at least being in their best 25, if not their best 22. Uh, Orazio Fantasia in particular, I think out of the two is the more 
uh, high reward one in the context of this season because you know we've seen him perform really well at AFL level before in his first season at Port Adelaide he had 28 goals from 15 games which is really strong output from a small player and Carlton do have a good amount of small forwards and uh, there's going to be genuine co- competition for spots there but I would still argue that Orazio does add something to their dynamic that they don't already have and so finding a way to integrate him into the side with him putting scores on the board would be hugely impactful in the context of next season. We do know he's been injury hit. I think he's played four games in two seasons since that, that great season at Port Adelaide which led to him being delisted uh, but like I said I think he is a real high upside option for them. Holland's probably a little bit more long term but it would be great to see him into the side. He's played just nine games last year at an average of 12 disposals a game and just kicked the three goals. So uh, that being said, he has only played three seasons at AFL level and he has been largely crippled by injury. So for him, it's probably starting the year, getting some continuity, playing in the VFL uh, and hopefully him breaking into the side. If he he comes into the side, he does add something different as a bit of a dynamic forward midfielder. The next one I have is around their uh, their key back combination and and just finding a a mix that works. Uh, So we know Jacob Wiedering's a lock. He's one of the best in the game at what he does. Uh, but then finding the, the tall, taller options around him uh, would, would be an interesting headache, I think, for Carlton here because there's a few options there that I think, you know, individually they're all decent and probably relatively even, evenly matched, but you can't fit all of them into the side. So specifically, guys like Brody Kemp, Caleb Marchbank, Mitch McGovern, Lewis Young, okay? So that's four outside weedering that probably need to become two. And you also want a bit of a balance between those because, you know, Kemp is someone that is probably not a, he's not a true key back. I think he's probably been earmarked for a bit of a role on more dynamic forwards this year. Your mid-sized forwards that are good to, uh, in the air and at ground level. Maybe someone like a Dugowie if he's playing forward or a Stringer or something like that. Uh, so maybe he becomes the third tall. So then which defender takes the other tall forward? The one best suited to it is probably Lewis Young. But does that mean you miss out on Mitch McGovern? Do you play four? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not really prescribing the answer in this particular video. I'm just saying they need to find a mix that works because Weedering is a lock. Beyond that, finding a, a settled defense, I suppose is what I'm saying, uh, would probably be a key focus for Carlton this year. The next one is about reintegrating Zach Williams or at least getting him up to speed as quickly as possible because this guy has been a really good player in the past and has struggled to get on the park and I do think he almost serves as like a new recruit for the Blues in 2024. Last year missed through uh, ACL. The year before that I think he, he played like a dozen games maybe less through a calf injury. You actually have to go back to 2019 to find the season where he played more than 14 games. So this guy has been battling injury for a period of time now but what he does add is a lot of run and carry and a uh, really good kick off off half back driving uh, you know a penetrating kick off uh, out of defense what this does is you know he can work in tandem with Saad it really does allow you know Doherty who has pushed up the ground previously a little bit more freedom it gives him certainly more options and then you get a really balanced defense out of that and he is a quality player so getting the best out of him reintegrating him into the side because the last time Zach Williams played in this side Carlton wasn't the team that they are now so things will look a little bit different but it'll be interesting to see him get fit and I hope to see it happen the next point I have is probably just a pure list management one, um, and that is I think they probably just need to add a midfielder through the draft this year, um, which probably doesn't sound particularly juicy, but just looking at their list through, through all the videos I've done this year and analyzing teams' lists, one point I came up with Carlton was they probably just don't have enough midfielders on the list. So, um, you know, the depth outside the, the 22, the immediate depth, uh, depending on who you put in your best 22 naturally, I mean, there's a couple of guys like Jackson Beans, Jack Carroll, we just don't really have answers on those guys, and also is Elijah Hollins a genuine on baller I mean he's sort of played a a hybrid role in the past I'd like to see him play as a midfielder and fulfill that potential but long story short it's it's not like their midfield's a weakness in fact it's unbelievably strong particularly at the top end I just think you know when you're looking at if you broke down each position into into numbers I just don't think Carlton have quite enough yet so I think adding a midfielder through the draft uh, would be a good move for them the next one I have is to beat Collingwood again you know, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that they beat Collingwood three times in the finals. Obviously, that's what they want. But it would be just great to finish this year from a Carlton perspective, having beaten their arch rivals in probably one of the biggest Carlton-Collingwood clashes. Like, we are set up for a year where Carlton-Collingwood games are probably bigger than they ever have been in the history of time. Like, when was the last one? I think there was 2012, 2011, that sort of era. But I would argue that both teams are better now uh, than they were in those years. Maybe not Collingwood in 2011. I don't want to go down that tangent, but you get what I'm saying. The, the hype and the uh, the anticipation for Carlton Collingwood games this year will be immense. 
And if things don't work out from Carlton in terms of like winning the flag, they would at least like to end this year saying, well, at least we beat Collingwood at least once. If they can beat them twice, that's great. But last year, they split it one and one. Uh, the Pies won by five goals in round 10. Then the Blues got their revenge in round 20 when they had clicked as a side. And of course, you know, adding to that narrative was the year before where Collingwood knocked them out of the top eight in the final round. They're also both battling to be the first team to 17 flags. So there's just so much narrative going into this particular matchup. And since 1980 as well, which is as far as finalsiren.com will go back, uh, it's 43 to 45 the Pies way in terms of matchup. So there's so much evenness to this and uh, the anticipation of these games will be absolutely huge. And the final point is just to simply genuinely contend this year. I mean, I don't think they're necessarily at the point where, you know, if they don't contend this year or next, then the premiership window is going to crumble. I don't think that. But at the same time, Carlton fans have laboured a lot in the in recent times just waiting for their team to be good again. And I would just, I think a fair resolution is to be at least around the mark where they were last year. And that is in the final four with a genuine chance in that prelim final at quarter time. It looked like they were going to a grand final. To reach those heights again, I think absolutely should be the goal for Carlton this year. Uh, you know, if they, if they fold for a little bit long term, the, the list profile, the talent profile is still good enough to mean that, you know, in three years they could still pinch one. But at the same time, Carlton fans have been through enough. Getting that deep into September again, or close to, should absolutely be a pass mark for Carlton in 2024. So that's my take on the Blues going into this year, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with anything you'd add. Obviously, I can't cover absolutely every little detail um, about what Carlton hoped to achieve in 2024. So I rely on your comments to help me get better at what I do as well. But of course, let me know if anything in the video you disagree with. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Cheers.